We think and feel differently because of what a little Greek town did during a century or two, 2,400 years ago. What was then produced of art and thought has never been surpassed and very rarely equaled. And the stamp of it is upon all the art and all the thought of the Western world. And yet, this full stature of greatness came to pass at a time when the mighty civilizations of the ancient world had perished and the shadow of effortless barbarism was dark upon the earth. In that black and fierce world, a little center of white-hot spiritual energy was at work. A new civilization had arisen in Athens, unlike all that had come before. Edith Hamilton In the 5th and 4th centuries BC, in an obscure collection of backwater city-states, the Greek-speaking peoples produced the greatest flowering of genius in human history. That period and that place are classical Greece. The classical age can be divided into three historical periods. The Persian Wars, when the Greeks fought for and won their independence from the Persian Empire. The rise and fall of Athens, including its progress from tyranny to democracy and empire, and the Peloponnesian War, which pitted the Athenian Empire against Sparta's League and brought down the glory that was Greece. Amidst this violence, the classical Greeks created or made fundamental contributions to human achievement in art, philosophy, architecture and politics, geometry and tragedy, military strategy and lyric poetry. They invented democracy, natural philosophy, and the disciplines of history and mathematics. Their achievements of this epoch are so numerous and so expansive that each would reward a lifetime of study. There were kings in classical Greece, but there were also limited tyrants, elected councils, and complex constitutions. In Athens, Pericles was the model for democratic leadership and its most forceful advocate. In Sparta, women were educated and powerful and owned one-third of the land. The Greeks invented the theater and its proscenium arch. For that theater, they invented comedy and tragedy. The plays of Aeschylus, Euripides, and Sophocles are rivaled in eminence only by those of Shakespeare. The Greeks invented the art of naturalistic sculpture. Buildings like the Parthenon set an architectural standard that has never been excelled. Pythagoras studied music through the lens of mathematics. This period produced the foundational works of world literature, from Plato's Republic to the Oedipus Cycle, from the histories of Herodotus and Thucydides and the lyric poetry of Sappho. Under the broad heading of philosophy, we see an explosion of intellect. Euclid, Aristotle, and the Pythagoreans invented geometry, logic, and the formal study of mathematics. Plato and Aristotle were the authors of the Western philosophical tradition and wrote works on everything from ethics and political theory to astronomy, cosmology, anatomy, biology, theories of literature and art, meteorology and physics, from the most trivial points of etiquette to the nature of man and the universe. Greek philosophers, especially the pre-Socratics, were the first thinkers known to have sought mechanistic explanations for the physical world. Thales and Heraclitus speculated on the constitution of the earth. Leucippus and Democritus invented atomic theory. This natural philosophy was not science. It was non-experimental. For example, Aristotle speculated brilliantly on all aspects of the natural world but willfully ignored observations that conflicted with his theories. Nevertheless, Greek natural philosophy was the first serious attempt to explain reality without recourse to religion, superstition, and myth. 500 years before Christ, in a little town on the far western border of the settled and civilized world, a strange new power was at work. Something had awakened in the minds and spirits of the men there which was so to influence the world that the slow passage of long time, of century upon century, and the shattering changes they brought would be powerless to wear away that deep impress. 
Athens had entered upon her brief and magnificent flowering of genius which so molded the world of mind and spirit that our mind and spirit today are different.